So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanju Malhotra, and I'm your host for today. Um, this is the 11th year that we are organizing the India Unlimited event, and uh, the theme is on uh, India-Sweden Innovation Day. Uh, so we warmly welcome all of you to join us today. Uh, as you understand, there was a small change in the program, so we are starting first with the Innovation Partnership which is really the reason we are also here today. It is because it is the innovation partnership that helped us to put this concept of the India-Sweden Innovation Day. It was when the two prime ministers signed on this, and I think that was 2016, and since then there's been a very strong collaboration and cooperation on the government-to-government -government level, and also, also on the academia and the business parts. So without saying uh, more, and after this session, we will have the inaugural panel and then the inauguration uh, also. So I would like to warmly welcome Carl Rosen. You're the director at the Ministry of Enterprise and uh, basically leading on this project of the um, innovation partnership. So I'd like to hand over the stage to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sanyu. Um, I just uh, want to make a confession here. I'm deeply in love with India. <laughs> and the reason for that is that uh, 40 years ago, I was a freelance journalist in traveling in, in, in India, writing articles. So I think I know one or two things about India. And now I'm coordinating the, the uh, in the India-Sweden Innovation Partnership for the government, so that's a, a great honor for me. Uh, I'm leading, I'm a moder I'm your moderator at the first panel here, and I would like to introduce uh, the two first panelists, and now 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 we'll sit down. Okay, Martin Peterson from Vinova, uh, who is coordinating uh, the the India India from uh, at Vinova. Please, you can sit in the middle. We can, we can be a little bit closer, I think. And Magnus, you can be close as well. Magnus Herviden, Senior Advisor at the Ministry of Education. And he will talk more about space to us because that's his one of his special subjects. So anyway, um, so nice to see you here. And the way we, we run, we'll run these panels is that uh, we, will, um, we, will, we will have three panels, one from the, let's say, the Swedish side, uh, and one from the Indian side, and we will have connection with Delhi, we, with three uh, important persons, and then the last panel is about space. So, uh, with that, I would like to, to uh, ask Marlin, country manager for India at Vinova, uh, and there are many established collaborations on innovation between Sweden and India. Could you please share some highlights from ongo ongoing R&D collaboration, please? Thank you, Carl. Good morning, everyone. Good day. Namaste. Uh, yes, there are indeed uh, a lot going on under the Indo-Swedish Innovation Partnership. Vinova that I'm representing, uh, we only just approved uh, three projects. Uh, with DST, the Indian Department of Science and Technology. It's three company-led uh, projects uh, within sustainable industry, sustainable mobility and digitalization. And we don't only have uh, fruitful collaboration with DST, but also with uh, DBT, the Indian Department of Biotechnology. And we're just to approve a handful of projects within health and the sub-teams of uh, uh, AI, biodesign, and circular economy. And in addition, uh, to further improve uh, or promote collaboration between Sweden and India within uh, circular economy, we've come together no less than uh, eight research funding agencies uh, on the both sides, Sweden and Indian side, to jointly fund uh, projects, R&D projects within circular economy, eight large projects. Um, and in this case, we encouraged uh, 
projects to include actors from different sectors, both the uh, private, public and academic sector. And this is sometimes called uh, triple helix or multiple helix and uh, can be considered one of the keys to innovation. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we will talk to our uh, one of our, our people in Delhi, and this is Per Arne Wikström, and I hope we will see him on the screen. Yes, he is, he's there. And uh, my question to you, Per Arne, uh, uh, good to see you to, to start with. Uh, what is going on in India when it, with relevance for future collaborations? Uh, what is going on in Indian R&D? And, and now you have only two days to talk. No, two minutes, please. <laughs> So thank you, Carl, and, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you. Uh, and this first question, of course, um, what's going on in India is basically, uh, uh, it's like uh, asking about what's uh, on the smorgasbord that, uh, that, that you can try and taste. There's a lot of things happening, of course. We have a, uh, an R&D landscape in India that is rapidly evolving, um, both because, of course, the growing economy and we have young entrepreneurs uh, out there. We have uh, government led uh, missions and you have also private sector engagement. So everything is basically in place for for uh, for creating a, a, a very interesting future in this country. Um, I know that you have Magnus there, so he will talk about space, which is a definitely a special um, topic. But you also have um, some other interesting upcoming areas. Uh, quantum is, is one area where India has decided to have a mission. You have the National Green Hydrogen Mission, um, a strong commitment to clean energy and uh, the transition towards that. Um, I will not talk about lead it because that's um, other people will talk about that later on. Um, you also have, again, uh, everyone talks about AI. India is well advanced here and they're uh, moving quickly. Biotech, digitalization in general. Um, we have a lot of delegations coming, uh, R&D delegation from Sweden to India to discuss these topics. And uh, just recently we had one on healthcare, um, smart cities we've had uh, delegations on and we will have uh, uh, more uh, in the future. I, I would say that, um, uh, that what we can see here is a research-driven innovation um, uh, progress within this, uh, within this country. And sustainability is always there, climate change, uh, mitigation, advanced manufacturing. So many, many different topics. I would like to mention um, uh, uh, when we talk about this that we also have a in very interesting thing happening, um, which uh, is that India is now trying to unlock more private funding for R&D, uh, moving them closer to the Swedish model. And so they have something called Anud Sun National Research Foundation, ANRF. And that one is especially interesting, I would say, from a Swedish point of view, since it's designed to attract private capital to co-found research initiatives. That would mean that it will be uh, easier for Swedish companies to engage uh, in India. This is just in the beginning, uh, so we'll see what happens, but yeah, uh, a lot of possibilities, a lot of broad initiatives, and that is the foundation for more collaboration, I would say. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Marlin. You've been working with this uh, collaboration f for quite a long time. W what are the main synergies between India and Sweden when it comes to innovation? Thank you, Carl. Yes, uh, lately we've focused a lot on connecting the innovation systems. We've taken great interest in uh, India's centers of excellence and their innovation hubs. And we see great potential in connecting them with Swedish counterparts, uh, such as uh, incubators or innovation actors like yourselves. And for this reason, today's Innovation Day is also a great opportunity to connect the innovation systems. So uh, we have an outstanding program here ahead of us and a great crowd. So let's embrace this opportunity. And if I'm to mention uh, one last thing, uh, Sweden has made a huge investment in impact innovation. It's um, Sweden's next generation strategic innovation program. Uh, it's a long-term investment aiming to increase the pace of transition to a sustainable society. 
And uh, impact innovation uses a, a mission-oriented approach to innovation. And it's about breaking down silos, getting people together, stakeholders that would not have met otherwise, and get them uh, or allow them to uh, talk about problems and the way ahead. Because we believe uh, new collaborations and uh, ways of working uh, is what generates innovation and sustainable solutions. And of course, India remains a prioritized and strategic innovation partner for Sweden. So uh, hence, to sum it up, we believe in groundbreaking uh, collaboration on innovation across sectors and borders, uh, inspiring new ways of working, because together we can take on the challenges of today. Thank you. Daniel. Thank you very much. Um, my comment on this is, of course, that uh, I'm in charge for all uh, Swedish uh, innovation um, uh, partnerships. Uh, and the, uh, India, I must say, is a very rich co collaboration in several, in several uh, very important areas. So it's, it's really exciting to hear from you uh, what, what is happening. Uh, one last question to, to you, uh, Perone. Uh, we know that uh, Sweden is, is ranked high when it comes to innovation, and India is, is uh, coming up. Um, what can what can we in Sweden learn from 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 the Indian experience when it comes to innovation? How can uh, well how can we be how can we be better? Okay, so thank you, uh, Carl. I, I I would say that um, as we all know, uh, Sweden is always uh, ranked as one of the top uh, innovation nations globally, but. Uh, being here in India, I would say that since I, I experience uh, like a race between many countries and, and uh, in order to position ourselves as, as, a, uh, as a strong um, collaborative country. And I would say that, okay, so we have a posi position as globally a strong innovator, Sweden, but we also need to become leaders in innovation collaboration. And this is something I know that we you know I've talked about that. Uh, previous years, and they are also moving in this direction. But uh, you cannot stress this uh, more than uh, than this, because uh, if we collaborate within this field, it, it, we also amplify impact, and that is something that India uh, enjoys. Uh, so, okay, so how to position Sweden in India? I would say that, as Malin mentioned just uh, recently, um, the the INSAM collaboration, where you Swedish funding agencies together um, coordinate their efforts. And uh, she said, she mentioned that we had nine, uh, eight um, funding agencies collaborating. That I think is, is extremely important. I mean, we are small and we need to collaborate uh, um, between uh, funding agencies, but also through the triple helix model that also was discussed here uh, um, before, public sector, private sector, academia, um, uh, if we if we work closer together and we leverage these uh, opportunities that Sweden can uh, establish, then we can create bo both smart and cross-sectoral innovations that are, I think, highly attractive for international partnerships. This can also be done combining Swedish regional needs with Indian state state needs. So we can also move it uh, on a different scale or a different level, since India is such a big country with different needs. This, I would say, is a wide, uh, a wide spot and it's definitely possible to explore more about that. And then finally, I would also like to mention uh, when we talk about how to position Sweden in India, we, we can also collaborate within the Nordic uh, framework. Uh, that's another key strategy. Uh, we have uh, collaborated within, um, for instance, uh, uh, now at the moment we are collaborating with uh, battery energy storage with the Nordic company, uh, countries to promote Nordic as an expert uh, area in, in the world within this field. We've also done it within um, other uh, other fields. And okay. the EU collaboration frameworks and mechanisms, uh, again, to promote Sweden as part of our uh, of something bigger. So this uh, national regional collaboration, Nordic collaboration, 
um, EU collaboration uh, through Horizon and, and, and other ways are very promising and uh, the opportunities are so many. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Um, now we will turn to the next panel and uh, if you can put up the screen with the with our friends from from uh, Delhi, I would. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> my name is Sanjay Mishra, and I, I head uh, the. Uh, I'm working in the Department of Biotechnology, and looking after the programs of international cooperation. I think thank you for uh, for uh, celebrating this India Sweden Innovation Day, uh, which is very very important. And I came to know about this only recently. Uh, I think already Maulin has, you know, uh, uh, given the broad overview about the various cooperations which we are doing, and other speakers from Sweden side who are who are, who are speaking from Sweden and also from New Delhi office, they have given the large overview about the cooperations and the various areas. Uh, from DBT perspective, I I would like to re reiterate the areas where we are already working, uh, which are natural fit. Because we always look uh, the Swedish science and technology and Swedish society, the Nordic countries, as a in, not only but innovative, but more important, a sustainable society and a sustainable uh, <coughs> economy and sustainable technology and science and technology. So, uh, based on that, I think Department of Biotechnology has been working in areas of circular economy, green economy, artificial intelligence learning into the health area and digital health areas this is just to reiterate what we have been working nevertheless i look forward on today's uh, day to reiterate that what we have already achieved in partnership potential is maybe five times ten times more where we can work together i mean this is my you know uh, uh, my, my understanding Con considering the several factors the dbt has already uh, uh, framed a new policy of the bio E3, which the government of India and the cabinet has approved, where we talk about the six pillars of the circular economy into the food, sustainable food, sustainable fuels, and also the sustainable the therapeutics, biotherapeutics. So we, the whole aim is to put it into the circular economy. So my quick point will be that on the sustainable development, on circular economy, on uh, reduction of the carbon, there is a lot of potential where the government of India, DVT, and the, Swe and the Swedish counterparts can work. The last point, uh, as rightly pointed out by someone that the now National Research Foundation, ANRF, is on the cards where there will be support from industry, and that is much more broader funding mechanism. I, I also invite the, the government of the Sweden and also the various agencies to explore and partner the ANRF, if possible, in future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And uh, do, uh, do we have time for one question? Uh, and yes, that, please. Yes, and that is, um, I mean, everyone that is working with, uh, you know, innovation, collaboration, uh, uh, the, the problem is to, to create this triple or helix, for example, and to include business or industry. And, and, uh, uh, and I think that uh, the experience here in Sweden and in most countries, it's, it can be quite complicated to get this uh, working together. And, uh, and uh, do you think that you, the new initiatives in India will, will, give, um, will give a push? for the industry to, to innovate together with academia and, um, and, and well, so let's say government. Uh, very interesting question. Uh, uh, I think uh, my answer will be yes. And to add, the way the new funding mechanism and the body is being structured and has been envisaged, there's no other option. Because the total kitty or the total money, which is the NRF, 80%, uh, about 80% has to come from industries. Mm -hmm. And if industry will put the money, they will demand their own share. Yeah. They will demand the kind of agenda setting which yeah. is relevant to industry. Okay, so, so, so that is the one, uh, I will say the structural arrangement. But apart from that, I mean, if I can take, uh, take example of my own department, DBT, 
we do have created a body called BIREC, Biotechnology Industry Assistance Council, which is a baby of the DBT and whose primary job is to support industries in terms of the grants, collaboration, startup. So that is my window yeah. for industries. Yeah. So already DBT has, in DST already has a TDB, Technology Development Board, which is the arm to help the industries. So earlier there were a few mechanisms, but I can see the writing on the wall in the future, there'll be a lot more collaboration uh, and funding models, funding supports with the industries. However, however, I, I, I must uh, warn myself that I've, I've learned about the Swedish model where you are integration of universities with industries absolute. Mm -hmm. I know like University of Lund or University of Uppsala, Gothenburg, they are primarily, uh, you know, they have got one industry very, very close. That may not be possible in the present form as of now. No. You know, not exactly like Swedish model, but here I can see more of a consortium of industries working together. This is, the, this is my understanding. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Mishra. Uh, and uh, now we will turn to the next speaker, which will be Vijay Kumar, uh, who is a scientist. He's at the Ministry of Earth Sciences at the Government of India. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, good morning, Blitz, uh, from Sweden and also from India. So my name is uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar. I work with the Ministry of Earth Sciences, and uh, I look after the program related to polar science and uh, ocean science in the ministry. But as such, uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences is looking after many broad areas. Uh, the main four uh, you can say focus area is one is related to weather and climate. Uh, we we have uh, various issues under Ministry of Earth Sciences who look after the weather and climate modeling forecasting that uh, starts from uh, now forecasting to season forecasting to decadal forecasting to uh, century forecasting. Then we have another program related to ocean science in which uh, we take care of the various issues related to oceans, whether it is ocean observation, whether it is ocean uh, technology development, whether it is uh, uh, living and non-living resources from ocean. Then we also have a program related to polar science. That is, uh, India has uh, stations in Antarctic and Arctic, so we take care of the activities in uh, polar polar science. Uh, then fourth area of, uh, you can say, focus of Ministry of Earth Sciences is related to Earth Sciences or specifically to seismology. So whatever seismological threat uh, related to, uh, related to uh, this thing is, we have that mandate uh, to provide the uh, network. So these are the main, you can say, focus area of uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences. And we have already uh, existing collaboration with Sweden. One is, uh, as uh, uh, Malin has told, we have under circular economy, uh, we have 102 uh, uh, projects along with Sweden. And then we have uh, some collaboration related to polar science also. Uh, one of the antenna, uh, Sweden antenna has been put up at uh, near to one of the Indian uh, research station in uh, Antarctica. Uh, so, so we are collaborating that. We have also an MOU with the Sweden Polar uh, Institute related to uh, polar uh, studies. Uh, uh, and we we have some discussion uh, recently with some universities in Sweden related to some cooperation uh, related to this polar science and specifically to Arctic, uh, Arctic uh, areas. As you may be knowing, India is one of the observer in the Arctic uh, Council. So we are uh, we are uh, we are looking forward to have some more collaboration with the different Arctic Council uh, countries, including Sweden, uh, in the Arctic uh, in the polar uh, science regime also. And uh, then uh, we are also uh, recently we have uh, launched uh, two missions. One is uh, related to deep ocean mission, uh, 
uh, and then another one is related to mausam mission mausam means uh, mausam mission means weather mission so uh, th these both the um, uh, you can say missions are basically how we can increase the observation uh, weather and climate or atmosphere and also the observation and how we can use uh, these uh, to forecast various uh, you can say parameters and various disasters uh, related to atmosphere and uh, deep ocean in deep ocean we are also looking after how we can uh, take care of the resources which are available in uh, the ocean both within the ez area of any country and beyond uh, national jurisdiction area uh, so in this area we are open for uh, collaboration with sweden or you can say increase our collaboration with sweden uh, in these areas uh, so i think uh, uh, i will end uh, at this place yeah thank you uh, thank you, Dr. Kumar. Um, um, uh, I think we will uh, we can start uh, end this panel and move to the next panel, and that is about another interesting agency. And um, I don't know if you if you in the audience think about agencies in general. You don't really have a favorite agency, do you? Well, your tax agency, no. Uh, but my perception is that in India there is one agency that is uh, very popular, and that's the space agency, ISRO. And that is what we we will talk about space, and we'll talk about India and Sweden now. And uh, um, I w would like to turn to Magnus Herviden and to repeat. You are uh, a senior advisor at the Ministry of Education, and also um, uh, you um, you are at the well at the ministries. I would say the space expert, and you recently came back from India, and uh, where a space delegation attended the first India Sweden Space Industry Day. And you also had meetings with, among others, the chairman of the, of the Indian Space Research Organization, and that's the agency I was talking about. Uh, and what did you take home from this trip? Uh, first, see if this works. It seems to work. Yes. So, thank you, Carl. Yeah, it was, uh, we came uh, back from uh, India just 10 days ago, and it was uh, several things I bring home, actually. First, uh, haven't been to India for a couple of years. Uh, it's uh, really impressive to see the kind of punch, the positive energy. Uh, I would say the self-confidence uh, among a lot of Indian stakeholders. Uh, so it's really interesting for us to be there and feel this uh, uh, atmosphere of, of positive vibes, I would say. Then, more specifically on space, of course, it's really impressive to see the feats, the advances that the Indian nation has done the last decade in space, uh, going missions to Mars, uh, landing on the south pole of Moon last year and so on. So that's extremely impressive. And also, from my point of view, working in the ministry, of course, I'm a little bit envious of see the investments going into space now from the Indian government. Uh, it's really also something uh, which uh, means business, I think, for India, uh, having a lot of money now coming into the space sector. And the space sector is also opening up for investments uh, from abroad, and that's really important. So, hence, the space uh, delegation with uh, about 10 companies from Sweden was very timely. So, uh, we brought 10 companies. It was uh, excellently organized by Business Sweden, by the way. So, uh, we had these 10 companies. Uh, meeting with um, uh, Indian, uh, not only the uh, ISRO, but also uh, Indian space companies, startups and some more well-established company going into space. So I think that opens up for a lot of opportunities now, uh, looking forward, since we also have a thriving, uh, I would say, uh, startup uh, and entrepreneurship scene in Sweden. So there should be a lot of opportunities to explore. Uh, excellent. Uh, I will turn to um, 
Rupa Takrar Bagun, who is working for Business Sweden in, in Bangalore, and she will be with us soon. Rupa is there, great. Rupa, um, you were one of the participants at, at uh, this uh, delegation trip from Sweden, going to the first uh, India-Sweden uh, Space Industry Day. Uh, and um, uh, and what are your what are your impressions after after, after this uh, this trip, please? No, thank you, thank you so much, and good morning and namaste, everyone, and thank you for having me in the panel. So, firstly, we feel very proud of co-hosting this business delegation from Sweden to India within space, and in arranging a space industry day in collaboration with Team Sweden and In Space. The objective of the India-Sweden Space Industry Day was to promote the Swedish space ecosystem capabilities and accelerate industry engagements between both countries, as well as meeting and hearing company presentations from 10 Indian companies focusing on space and of course the Swedish companies that participated. And the companies that were involved ranged from SMEs to large companies from both the countries. The session itself was inaugurated by Mr. Håkan Jevrell, Sweden's uh, State Secretary for Foreign Trade, along with uh, Magnus Herviden, uh, that is on the couch with you today. And through, through, through this uh, delegation then, we organized two networking sessions with 50 plus stakeholders from the space industry in India. And we also arranged six company visits to Indian space companies, including startups and uh, large uh, players. So to answer your question, uh, my impression of the industry uh, space day was that this delegation not only helped Swedish companies to explore enormous opportunities and developments happening in the space ecosystem in India, but it also created awareness about Sweden's advanced and innovating offering, offerings in the space sectors uh, to the Indian stakeholders. And further, I want to mention that the Swedish delegation was very impressed by India's ambitions and space program. And we saw a lot of synergies and opportunities where Swedish excellence can contribute to India achieving its goals in space. And we also saw that our countries share a passion for engineering and the vision of a sustainable space industry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this The space industry is... Uh um, well, it's, my impression is that it's uh, it's a very specialized industry with people that with deep knowledge and in specific areas and so forth. And Magnus, uh, uh, before we go to the next question for the audience, wh what are the main components here? Is it rockets? Is it what satellites or what? What is, <laughs> is it? Only research or whatever? I mean that because that must be very important when you try to find the new areas to cooperate with uh, within with uh, between Sweden and India, please. Yeah. So you actually have several components. I mean, first you have what you might have might think is the space industry, that's engineers in white uh, white clothes uh, doing very advanced things. And that's true, that's needed and it's a very important part. But also now space is part of everyday uh, societal functions. So actually companies coming from other sectors now uh, being able to use space data, for instance, in their ordinary daily routines and, and uh, processes, that's very important too. So we see a mix of traditional space companies, but more importantly also a lot of other companies coming in. Some advanced companies in other uh, engineering sectors also discovering that they, with the help of data generated from space, uh, can, can uh, advance their own business, or they can actually provide functions. Let's say a traditional telecom company that are very advanced in communications, they can, of course, also do communications in space if they just uh, sort of uh, enlarge a little bit their competence and bring in engineers. Uh, from, from the space sector. So you see a mix of traditional space companies with uh, newcomers and also traditional companies in other sectors uh, having this mix. And that's what's really pushing now space, mm. I would say, and, and use of space also very importantly. Mm. And um, uh, 
Uh, one imp uh, one other, uh, another impression is, of course, that uh, uh, well, uh, uh, a lot of politicians and, of course, the governments like space because it's uh, it's exciting and uh, and so forth. And uh, it's an industry where there are so many different values, not only business values. And so it's very hard to, it's, it's not hard, but, but it's, it, it takes a lot to, to cooperate in these areas. And I assume that that is something that was on, on, on the agenda as well. No, definitely. Uh, a lot of space projects uh, are very complicated. Uh, it is rocket science. So uh, it's... Uh, Actually, international collaboration, especially for a small country like Sweden, is necessary. We are part of European Space Agency, ESA, and we also do a lot of bilateral agreements. There is one between the Swedish National Space Agency and ISRO since many years, almost 40 now. Uh, so, so that's really necessary. And uh, talking about that, actually, during this uh, uh, visit, the State Secretary, Håkan Jevrell, handed over an invitation to the chairman of um, ISRO, Dr. Somanath, to come to Sweden with a, a space delegation. Uh, so that's hopefully going to take place um, maybe next year. Uh, so we are uh, hoping that that also will further in, uh, enhance the collaboration and opportunities uh, between Sweden and Indian stakeholders in the space sector. Mm. Interesting. Okay, uh, and now I turn to Rupa again. Uh, and um, Rupa will be uh, on the screen, yes. Rupa Takrar Bagun, here you are. Uh, okay, um, now uh, you've been thinking about this uh, space uh, or for, for quite a long time now as a, as a business opportunity and, and, and so forth. What is the, the, the potential of the areas of collaboration uh, when it comes to innovation between the countries from your perspective? And uh, does business uh, Sweden have any activities uh, planned for uh, in India? Please. Thank you. Well, India has ambitious growth plans and upcoming missions such as Chandrayaan-4, Venus Orbiter mission, human space flight test missions and other series of satellite missions. Where I see potential areas of collaboration and innovation between our two countries would be in areas such as uh, green propulsion systems, uh, space tech test beds, um, small satellite and, and subcomponents, advanced materials, um, the Swedish launch capability with S-Range, and of course, academia, collaboration and others. And uh, we see that uh, the delegation was a first step in creating a more extensive industry interaction between the countries and to continue to strengthen the, the MOU, which uh, Magnus also mentioned that we have, uh, that uh, stretches uh, almost 40 years back. Uh, when it comes to the planned activities, um, for now we will uh, focus on supporting the companies that were part of the delegation and we will follow up with them uh, on their plans for the Indian market. Uh, we will support in following up in the industry to industry engagements between the countries at multiple forums. Uh, we will also support towards planning a similar Indian delegation to Sweden. Uh, as uh, Magnus uh, mentioned, uh, during the bilateral meeting, uh, our state secretary personally handed over uh, an invitation to the chairman of ISRO. So we are re really looking forward to uh, hosting an Indian delegation to Sweden as well. And uh, just to conclude, uh, all these activities will be done in collaboration with Indian space stakeholders. And in our role as Business Sweden, we have a strong team in place in India, which have the right skill set. Uh, we have the industry network and experience in supporting Swedish companies to penetrate the Indian space market. Uh, and of course, we have a fantastic collaboration with our Team Sweden partners in this, which is key. So um, that's what we are planning to do uh, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I will uh, conclude with two, two questions, not prepared, uh, for uh, Magnus and Marlin. And one, when it comes to uh, Sweden's position within the space industry, uh, how important is it that the only, I assume it's the only launch capacity within the European Union in Europe, <laughs> 
is actually in Sweden. How, is, how important is that when you, when you meet with India? Is, is that a key thing? Or? So uh, we, will, uh, we have since uh, over 50 years, we have this space-based S range. We have uh, launched over 600 sounding rockets. They go up very high, actually double the height of International Space Station, but they fall down. They don't have enough speed to go into orbit. So now we have the physical infrastructure in place to do orbital la launches. There are still some uh, commissioning to do and, and some uh, agreements uh, must come in place, but we are planning to launch into orbit from next year. And that will, of course, be a very strategic asset, not only for Sweden, but also for the partners of Sweden, yeah. European Union, European Space Agency, and other partners like India, for instance. That will be a launch capacity which is very important, uh, especially for uh, going into polar orbits, that is, they go around the uh, North and South Pole, uh, which is a normal orbit for, uh, um, for instance, for Earth observation satellites. So, uh, w yes, that will be a very strategic asset and I think important for us that we can have this launch capacity and also have that as a uh, um, collaboration with other uh, nations that have launch capacity, as India do. Uh, so, yes, it's very important. Yeah. Okay, Marlin, uh, final words from you. What? <laughs> Are you? Yeah, please. Thank you, Carl. Yes, I'd uh, recommend you all to join our LinkedIn group. We have a LinkedIn group called Sweden India Innovation Initiative. And in this group, we post uh, regularly on things going on, such as today's Innovation Day. I can also mention a couple of things coming up. Uh, there's uh, India's, no, sorry, Sweden India Innovation Bridge. You might hear more about it uh, later on today. It's a delegation trip going to India in uh, November, I believe. And Sweden or Sweden's um, innovation agency, Vinova, that I'm representing, were granting travel grants to SMEs joining this trip. It's a trip to connect innovation systems uh, organized by SIBC, Sweden India Business Council. So if it's something for you, reach out to any of the staff in this organization. And uh, if I may mention one more thing, uh, Vinova regularly uh, organizes open uh, information meetings uh, where you can also learn more on uh, what's going on. And we're planning one in February. Uh, it's a joint uh, information meeting for cooperation with countries in Asia. But uh, India will have a, uh, we have a strong emphasis on India in, in the program. So thank you again, Carl. Thank you very much, and uh, with that I want to conclude this session and thank our panelists here in Stockholm and also in, in uh, India with a big uh, hand of applause. Thank you.